Okay, hello everyone. This is a video on the history of numbers. This is part one, an introduction and Babylonian numbers. My name is Christopher Scott Vaughn. I'm a math instructor at Montgomery County Community College. Okay, this is a timeline of human history. The Homo sapien species to which we belong is dated to about 250,000 years ago. And each increment you see here on, the, on this timeline is about 10,000 years. Recorded history is about 5,000 years. Uh, that's to the beginning of civilization with the Babylonians and the Egyptians. The Ashango bone was found in Central Africa. It's about 20,000 years old. It has markings that look like some kind of intentional counting, calculation. You can see here that there's a mark. This is two sides of, uh, of the bone. And uh, you can see th three marks, and then there's six and then there's four marks, and then there's eight. That's kind of an interesting little pattern there of doubling or halving. And then there's ten marks, and then there's two groups here of five each, and then there's a group of seven. So what does this mean? I don't know. Uh, some of these numbers, except for the nine, these are all prime numbers. That's kind of interesting. So you can read on the Internet about what uh, some of the theories are as to so what is the meaning. Some people think about uh, uh, calendars, and lunar calendars, and Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to zoom in on just this little period of uh, about 5,000 years here, but this little blue dash. This is uh, recorded history. Um, oh, I also I wanted to mention how it was about maybe 10,000 years ago where we begin to develop some kind of counting methods and uh, keeping track of uh, numbers. And that's really what I think really made it possible for agriculture and cities to evolve. Think about how you could... Uh, keep track of your wealth with uh, numbers and how you keep track of, of course, the, the seasons, the number of days in a year and trying to figure out when is the right time to plant uh, and how long until harvest. And so keeping track of uh, um, uh, agriculture would be, it would be necessary to have some kind of a sophisticated counting uh, methods as well. Okay, so what I have here is uh, an evolution of number symbols uh, over the past approximately 5,000 years. We are here in the uh, year 2013 now and uh, looking back 5,000 years. This is 5,000 year period back to 3000 BC. Uh, BC originally meant before Christ and AD meant Anno Domini. Uh, AD is uh, Anno Domini in Latin for the year of our Lord. Uh, this way of measuring years was conceived of during the Middle Ages. It was a way of counting years that had always been done before, uh, dating the passing of years and the reign of some king. Monks in the Middle Ages were continuing this tradition by dating the years since the time they believed was the birth of Christ. Uh, they didn't even have it exactly correct as to what we understand now. Uh, in the time of ancient Rome, the years were just numbered from the start of some new emperor, ruler, or dictator. It's fascinating for me to think about how um, uh, the ancient Egyptians and the ancient Babylonians would have are just about as old from the point of view of Julius Caesar and the ancient Romans. If they looked at the ancient Egyptian civilization, it's just about as old to them as Julius Caesar is to us. Right? This is about 2,000 years, and if you look for Julius Caesar back about 2,000 years, uh, back to the time of the ancient Egyptians, um, they are just as old to Julius Caesar as Julius Caesar is to us. It's fascinating for me to think about that. Um, so uh, we're going to learn about the ancient Babylonian numbers, the ancient Egyptian numbers, uh, ancient Greek numbers, Roman numerals, Mayan numbers, the Hindu Arabic numbers, of course, which are the numbers that we now use. All the numbers that you see here are the Hindu Arabic numbers. They uh, originated in India and were transmitted from India into Africa by uh, Muslim uh, scholars and then they were they were uh, moved from from North Africa up into Europe uh, uh, one of the examples of of how that was transmitted was uh, this mathematician named Fibonacci around the year 1200 in the Middle Ages Fibonacci sees these numbers in North Africa and he brings them to Italy and I think it's really fascinating to think about how those numbers then made it possible for Europe to wake up from the, from the Dark Ages and begin to develop uh, business and develop science.
because they had a much better number system than the Roman numerals, um, which uh, didn't even have zero. That's another interesting point, right? This concept of zero develops in India uh, and also developed by the Mayans. Uh, the, the Mayans' development of uh, numbers was really incredibly sophisticated, uh, particularly their calendar, but it never made it to Europe. Um, and it was through the um, India, through India, through the Muslim uh, scholars that the concept of zero made it into Europe uh, through Fibonacci. What I was going to say was that how fascinating it is that there are Roman numerals, Greek, Babylonian, ancient Egyptian numbers that were all in existence there uh, before the concept of zero as a number. So let's look at the ancient Babylonian numbers. These are about 5,000 years old, uh, back to uh, 3000 BC. This BCE is a reference to what, what we could uh, say is the, before the Christian era or before the common era. It's a sort of more modern way of counting years. Um, it's sort of global and, and, rec and recognizes that Christianity is not the only religion on, on, in the world. Um, and uh, So the ancient Babylonian numbers uh, were, they're called cuneiform uh, symbols and they were made, they were formed by sticking reeds into wet clay and allowing it to dry and uh, so this is a sort of vertical kind of triangle kind of shape that uh, represented a, a one uh, and then there are two of those together make two and three grouped together for the number three uh, then you can put one underneath and create a grouping of four of those vertical symbols for a four here's five six we continue seven eight nine, and once we reach ten, this symbol seems like it's kind of turned sideways, a horizontal kind of a triangular shape, uh, that's the symbol for ten. And then you can see eleven is a ten and a one, here's ten and two ones, easy to follow, uh, two tens makes twenty, this is uh, s uh, symbols for the number twenty-one, two tens and a one, now this is twenty-two but it got cut off in my picture here, uh, so uh, it's really supposed to be two of those vertical symbols. There's three tens for 30 and 31. Uh, 40, uh, so four uh, of these symbols for 10 all grouped together, five symbols for 10 all grouped together for 50, and then we reach 59 here. Uh, five symbols for 10 and nine symbols for one. You notice that I really have just two symbols. I have a symbol for 10 and a symbol for 1. There's no symbol for 0. Uh, and this is how we count up to 59 in the ancient Babylonian number system. Uh, what happens after that is kind of neat. Uh, so let me move on here. We've got up to 59, but the way in which the Babylonians counted is the way that we still count when we tell time. So our method of telling time is ancient, all the way back to the beginning of civilization. We still tell time. It was just passed on from the Babylonians uh, to the Romans, and from the Romans to Europe, and then the entire world uh, has, uh, has adopted this, this method of, of telling time. Why 60? Um, possibly because it can be divided up so easily into smaller groups. Uh, nobody really knows exactly why 60, uh, but uh, this, is a, this is a theory. You can divide it easily into half, you can divide it into four parts, you can divide it into twelve parts, as you see on the clock, um, into thirds. Um, and uh, it's a big, a big enough number that you can measure uh, small increments, but you can also easily divide it in many different ways. So that that's, seems like a good explanation as to why 60 was a, was a good number in very ancient civilizations for, for uh, uh, grouping uh, when you're counting. Um, so if you think about how we go to 59 minutes and then we go to, let's say, one hour and zero minutes, that kind of thinking is what you're going to see happen as I begin to show examples of the ancient Babylonian number system once you pass 59. Um, so let's, let's say uh, this happens, of course, with minutes and seconds and hours and minutes. Um, the, the, the words uh, minute and seconds come from a Latin for a minute part, a second minute part. Okay, so let's look at uh, 67 here. When you look, when you think 67, as an ancient Babylonian, you would have written a, a single one symbol, and that would be one in the 60s part of the number, 60s place, and then have seven ones over here. And it's just the fact that there's a space here. There was no symbol for zero, there was no placeholder originally, 
and they would just you just have to understand by reading whatever else was on the page that this actually was supposed to be 67 which is a certain ambiguity which obviously could cause cause could cause confusion uh, so we'll have to be careful about that as well as we go through and look at these but um, this is uh, this is the number 67 it's one single 60 and seven ones um, and that's how it works Let's see if I have another example down here how about the number 132? How would you have written if you were an ancient Babylonian? How 5,000 years ago, how did they write 132? What I would do is I'd think about how many 60s that is. It's sort of like uh, saying if that was 132 minutes, how many hours do you have and how many minutes left over? You'd have 2 hours and 12 minutes. 132 can be broken up into 2 60s and 12 ones. So here's where I put uh, two ones in the 60s place. So I'm saying two in the 60s place and 12 in the ones place. And that's how I create 132 uh, in, uh, in Babylonian numbers. Two 60s makes 120 plus 12 total in the ones place. Right, so this is 12 and this is 120 and that makes 132. Here's another example. How about 253? So you could think, 253, now how many 60s do I have here? And uh, the answer is, uh, there are four 60s. It'd be like thinking, uh, how many hours do you have and how many minutes left over? If you take 253 divided by 60 equals four times with 13 left over. So I need four in the 60 place and 13 in the ones place. And, uh, and that makes this 253. 4 times 60 is 240 plus 13 is 253. So we have a ones place, we have a 60s place. Now if you go uh, high enough in your number, you'll have to go past 60 in the 60s place. And so what they would do is they just move over to a 60 squared place, which would be 3600. A 3600 place, a 60 place, and a ones place. I'm not going to go that big in my examples here. I think I got the point across and that's all I needed to do about how this works. I'll leave it at numbers uh, less than 3600 uh, for our for the questions that we deal with. Uh, let's see, I think I have another example. 672. How do you get 672 into ancient Babylonian? Well, I'm going to look at how many 60s I have and how many left over. So you could take 672 divided by 60 goes 11 times. 11 times 60, as you can see here, 11 times 60 is 660. So I need to write 11 in the 60s place and the remainder, which is 12, in the ones place. Okay. Uh, 11 60s and 12 ones. It's really neat to think about, right, how the ancient Babylonians did not think of this number in anything like the way that we do today when when they, they, they you know 672 they don't think 600s seven tens and two ones uh, which is our modern Hindu Arabic numbers uh, which are base 10 they had a base 60 number system and it was positional right this position is ones this position is 60s but it's a very different positional system uh, and uh, and it, it required this space now eventually they started taking one of these uh, symbols and turning it slanted. When they put it slanted, it was understood to be a placeholder, and that, that helps take away some of the ambiguity. You'd, you'd realize um, uh, that, that you had two groupings if you had that little slanted. I'm not using it because that wasn't originally there, uh, and, uh, and so that, that's, that's the kind, this is the way it was originally, the earlier Babylonian numbers were written. So the, the Babylonians would have thought how many 60s do you have and how many 1s do you have? It's just sort of uh, it's familiar in, uh, in the way that we think in terms of how many hours and how many minutes or how many minutes and how many seconds. So This number is 11 in the 60s place and 12 in the 1s place. And so it represents 11 times 60 and 12 times 1. So it's 660 plus 12 is 672. Okay, I think I got one more example here. Okay, write the modern Hindu Arabic number symbols for this number. Assume this represents one single number, right? 
So it looks like two grouping, I mean, it looks like two numbers, but if we take this to be one single number with two groupings, we understand that uh, it's a positional number system. So what would this be in our modern way of writing? Uh, what number is this? Okay, how about pause the video, see if you can figure it out, and then check it. Okay, so the first thing you realize is that you've got the two groupings here, but if this is all one single number, that's the 60s place first here. This is how many 60s you have, and this is how many ones you have. And so this is three ones in the 60s place. So that's three 60s, three times 60, you would think. That's 180 right there. That's 22 in the one. So this is 180 plus 22. 202. Three sixties, 22 in the ones, makes 180 plus 22. Answer is 202. 